Doppler effect is a change in observed frequency as a result of the relative motion between a sound source and an observer. So a change in observed frequency as a result of relative motion between a sound source and an observer, right? So that is 6.1. And then on the other hand, 6.2 is saying that let's calculate the wavelength of the sound waves emitted by the source. So if you look at our question statement here, you will realize that we are given the speed of sound in air is 340 meters per second, right? So we're going to go ahead and say that V is equal to 340 meters per second. And then another key information we have it is the frequency of that emitted sound, right? So the frequency is given to us as 880 hertz, right? And then now what we are looking for is the wavelength, right? Two years back when you're in 10th grade, uh, we say that uh, the velocity is equal to the frequency multiplied by the wavelength, right? So this is the exact formula we're going to use. So what is the velocity? The velocity is 340 meters per second, while our frequency is 880 hertz multiplied by the wavelength. So it is easy to see here that we're going to divide both sides by the frequency. So if we go and do that uh, for the free entitled ones, you will realize that our, so this, this is 880, right? You will realize that our wavelength is equal to 0 0.39 meters, right? Nothing complicated. You just identify your variables, string substitution, and you get your answer. Let's do 6.3. So 6.3 is saying that, let's calculate the frequency of the sound waves detected by detector A. So detector A is uh, the vehicle you can see on the left hand side that it is moving towards the sound source B. So if we want to find uh, that frequency that is going to be uh, detected by detector A, we can say that uh, the frequency of the listener is equal to V plus or minus the velocity of the listener divided by v plus or minus the velocity of the source everything multiplied by the frequency of the source so we know fully well that uh, v is a constant right uh, the speed of sound in a or in the media of interest and then vl is the velocity of the listener while vs is the velocity of the sound source right so as you can see from our sketch the velocity of the listener is 10 meters per second right and then it is moving towards the sound source because what we do when it is moving towards the sound source is completely different to what we do when it is moving away from the sound source so uh, we're gonna get the frequency observed by the listener as being so we have already established that v is a constant right 340 and now because the listener is moving towards the sound source, we put a plus on the numerator. If the listener was moving away, we would put a minus, right? So let's go ahead and put a plus. So we're going to have plus 10 and then everything divided by 340. Our sound source is stationary. So plus or minus zero doesn't make a difference, right? So we're just going to leave it as 340 and then multiply by the frequency of the sound source which we know that it is 880 and then if you put that in your calculator you should get the frequency observed by the listener as 905 hertz right and then this answer it makes sense because if the listener is moving towards the sound source we would expect the listener to detect a sound wave of a higher frequency compared to the sound source. Right, that is 6.3. Let's use 6.4 real quick. So 6.4 is saying that uh, the sketch below shows the frequency recorded by detector A. Uh, detector A is our listener. Let's not forget that. And then there goes our sketch. And then uh, 6.4 is saying that redraw the graph above for detector A in your answer book. On the same set of axes, sketch the graph of the frequency recorded by detector A. Label this graph as B. 
right this took me some time to figure out but i want you to look at something here so if you look on the left hand side you're gonna read this statement here that says detector b detects the sound waves reflected from the car right that is a key statement detector b detects the sound waves reflected from the car so here in uh, 6.3 right we calculated uh, the frequency that is detected by detector a right it is 905 hertz right so without making any assumptions let's just calculate uh, the frequency that is detected uh, by detector b right so that we can see whether uh, detector b will uh, detect a higher frequency with relation to a or a less frequency so let's go ahead and do that so the frequency re so the frequency that b is going to observe right is going to be equals to again v plus or minus vl divided by v plus or minus vs multiplied by frequency of so, so what is V? We know fully well that it is uh, 340, right? And then in this instance, B is the listener and it is stationary. So plus or minus zero, it doesn't really matter. Then divided by V, which is 340, and then plus or minus velocity of source. Since the source is now A, right? Uh, the car, let me not say A, but then the car. Then the car is moving towards B, then we're gonna have minus 10 and then multiply by the frequency of the wave right we know that the frequency of the wave is 880 so now it's just a matter of putting this in the calculator and seeing what you get so if you put 340 divided by 340 minus 10 which is just 330 essentially minus 880 you're gonna get 906.67 hertz right so you can see that the frequency observed by b is slightly greater than the frequency observed by A. So when we redraw the graph, uh, that should be easy to see. So let's, you know, go ahead and do that. So there goes our y-axis and then there goes our x-axis. So on the y-axis, we're looking for the frequency. So we have frequency on the y-axis and then on the x-axis, we have the time in seconds, right? so let's say this is our graph for a right this is the frequency for a and then the frequency for b should slightly be above the frequency of a right because we can see the difference in the frequency observed we have 906.67 which is 905 hertz so this is uh, for a and this is for b and we are essentially done